Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a flower and watercolor pencils. I'm gonna start by, and I'm working on a watercolor greeting card. I'm gonna start by putting in the stem with a light green watercolor pencil, and this is by Derwent. It's grass green, number 47. My pencils might look a little different than yours because these are the older style, but um, but they still work great. So I am not going to, uh, I'm not gonna buy a new set when these are just fine. You can use whatever brand you have as well. Now the, um, the head of the flower is going to be it's going to be all pretty much comprised into an oval i'm just going to very lightly put that on there i'm not planning on putting a background on so that's why i don't want to go too dark because i don't want to um i don't want to have those lines but i did want to get kind of an idea of where my petals were going to be and the bottom of the petals have some beautiful yellow on them and I will put a link to the reference photo I'm using uh, in the video description so make sure you check that out so that you can um, you can have that actual photograph to look at which might make it a little bit easier because I know uh, sometimes I go fast and my lines might look a little sketchy so you can have that uh, the information and I'm just going to start putting on some individual petals these um, this flower has these really pretty, um, loose, curly kind of petals, almost like a daisy, but not quite because the petals are really just uh, more voluminous. They also have a lot of character, but they're kind of the same shape as a daisy petal, just to kind of give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a reference there. But I just loved how they look like they're most dancing. And that's what I'm trying to trying to get here, those little individual petals, characters, characteristics. And I'm just trying that, that first circle that I put down there, that's just giving me kind of like a little bit of a guidepost of how high I want my petals. Some can go a little bit over, some will go in further, but it just helps me kind of balance everything around as I'm sketching. All right, so now I've got the basic flower drawn in there. Now I'm gonna go in with this darker green. This is sap green. Oh, that pink I used was uh, Pink Matter Lake, number 17. And I'll put a link, I'll put a, I'll write down the letter, the numbers that I use. And of course it'll be different if you're using a different brand of pencils, but if you are using the Derwent's, then uh, the Derwent watercolors, then it will, uh, it'll match up, even if they're the new style, I think. Uh, ink tents would be really nice to use with this too. Adding a little bit of green into the bottom of these petals. I'm gonna fill them in with some yellow. I like to add my color before adding water because I find if my paper is wet or damp um, and I try to add my color like from the pencil like this, then I get way too much color and I get harsh lines that I can't get rid of and so that's not what I want. Now I'm going in with Geranium Lake, number 15, and I'm adding the uh, really intense color that I see in my photograph. And I would recommend um, kind of opening, if you're following along, I would print out the photo that I've linked to, or I would just have it open in another screen so you can so you can look at it as you go. Or maybe even just watch me do it all the way through and then go print the photo or look at the computer screen and, and uh, go on your own. You can always come back and, and watch a part over again if you get stuck. It's a great thing about video, right? And I'm gonna kind of fill in the middle areas with this pink. I don't want to go too dark. It's going to start to be hard to see between the colors right now, but it'll uh, it'll clear up. It'll get clear as we do more. And then I noticed some kind of like purple cast at the ends of these petals, so I'm just going to add a little bit of that in now. I can always put in a little bit more later by using a wet brush against the tip of the pencil and carrying some color over that way. I just was wanted to get a little bit down while I was at it. Now I'm going to use this number six round. Um, you want a fairly firm small brush when you do watercolor pencils because you don't want to flood it with too much water. I'm going to start with my stem and I just love how the color releases. I love seeing that. But I almost have this brush too wet. If you look, it's, a, it's very glossy. I don't think I need quite that much so it wouldn't hurt to have like a paper towel handy to blot your brush on after you rinse it. All right, blot. I'm gonna go in here into the yellow areas. And I think I'll skip around and do all the yellow at once. Blend a lot of that green right in there. 
Now with the water, now some of you probably have the ink tense pencils and yes, you can use them. The only thing about ink tense is that once it dries, you won't be able to go back in and reactivate. So um, once you've wet it once, it's kind of all you get with a watercolor, regular watercolor pencil, you can go back in and blend colors together after they're dry, just to, just so you know. I'm just going to do the rest of this petal all at once. And there, so you can kind of see how one petal looks. Now it doesn't really look too fantastic until you get uh, until you get it all done. So I'm going to go ahead and liquefy all of my petals. Just keep on keeping on. And I'm expecting the phone to ring any moment because I'm expecting a phone call. But I thought, oh, this is pretty. I want to paint this. So of course, you know, multitasking. And once you get this base color, it'll dry a little bit lighter. Then we can go on over and add more details. Feeling very mellow. Mellow painting. It's a gorgeous day. A little chilly. Not too bad, though. Ah, I hear there's snow in the forecast. I'm hoping it's a funny joke. Well, not really that funny, but I'm hoping it's a joke because I just saw on Facebook somebody posted that we're in for like uh, 10 to 18 inches coming up, and I really hope not because it's not fun to trick or treat in the snow. <laughs> I don't want to send my kids out in their snowmobile suits. Heck, send them out on snowmobiles. <laughs> oh man, we we had such a bad winter last winter. We had so much snow. I really hope we don't this year. Okay, so we've liquefied everything, and I'm just making sure I have done that to everything. And if I see any weird, harsh lines, I'm just going to get rid of them right now. I've got my paper towel handy so I can wipe off my brush. And then I think I'm going to let it dry so we can layer over some more colors to really make this lively. All right, so once you have it liquefied, let it dry, and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, our painting is dry now, and I'm going to do some, like, shadows kind of in the, uh, kind of in between the petals that are kind of in the middle of the flower. And I really like to do this fairly soon because... I think that establish, establishes value and like as in like dark and light and it really helps make a painting um, come to life and what I'm doing is using that brush not a ton of water on there just enough to be able to pick some of the um, pigment off the tip and I'm just going kind of behind some of these flowers this purple is gonna look like a shadow because we don't really have um, tons of really dark colors in here so it's just going to give us that hint that things are kind of in the middle of the flower and push to the back so doing a little bit of this with the purple and then I'm going to go in with some of this red the um, and that purple is red violet lake um, number 24 and the red is geranium lake again I will put a list of the colors I used in the video description so you can uh, copy it down and uh, look at your colors. One thing I like to do and I recommend with um, no matter what brand you're using is to make a color swatch and all you do is take a you know piece of watercolor paper typically what you like using um, so you'll know how it behaves and then just swatch out all your colors add water to it see how they behave and then when it comes time to like, do a painting you can look at that chart and make sure you label it with the numbers that are on the pencils um, that way you can say okay I need to paint this flower I need a really bright pink I need a light pink I need a bluish pink you can go and find exactly the colors that you need now I'm going to add some of the details onto these um, petals here I'm just kind of streaking in the vein lines and any kind of like where the petals fold over on themselves and they've got more concentrated color I'm just throwing those in now and I can also smooth out any you know funky edges the thing I like about pencils is that honestly I can hold a bunch of them in my hands at once like this and have like a whole palette of watercolor paints just right in my hand really great for traveling um, because of that you can blend. I find that the, the lighter colors, I think it must be whatever they put in these pencils to act as like a, 
a filler. Whatever's in those lighter colors, it seems like it's a little bit more opaque and you can really kind of cover up and um, fix different problems when you have those add highlights and everything it's really uh, they're a little different than watercolor there you know whereas watercolor you've such a transparent paint watercolor pencils can be a little bit more opaque I think they do have a little bit of wax in them just like you know your traditional colored pencils I'm gonna go over to this yellow and I'm only using um, six colors here today I really I recommend whenever you're doing any sort of pencil art whether it be colored pencils watercolor pencils uh, pastel pencils. I'd recommend getting the largest set that you can afford, but not using them all in the same painting. So I'm using six colors, but they're, they're the six colors that are going to work best for this painting. They're not the six colors that are going to work best with a landscape painting or a pet painting or a bird painting. They're the six that are going to work best with this. So I recommend getting the biggest set you can afford, but not putting every single color you can into a painting. Now I'm switching over to the sap green number 49. I have had these pencils for so long. I've done so many paintings with them and they're still <laughs> barely worn down. That's a mark of a good pencil. Uh, there's other pencils out there that are that are good quality and they behave, they perform very well, but they wear down really quickly. A couple examples would be Reeves and Prima and there's nothing wrong with those colors. I think they're good pencils, but they're going to they're going to um, wear down a lot quicker. I think just you know, they just don't have the the strength of uh, the, this one's concentrated. I'm going in here with my pencil though, and I am uh, pulling a few of the, the bottoms of these petals out. I just, I don't want this big uh, blob. I just don't want a big yellow blob here, I guess. I want to kind of divide that space up a little bit. Add a little bit in there. It's a little bright. I'm going with a little bit of uh, lighter color. Grass green. Grass green. Oh, I remember when there was grass on the ground before it was all covered with leaves before snow was in the forecast <laughs> if you do get more color than you want blot don't rub just lift up let's lift up the color that's too much not a big deal and I feel like I want to go in with just a little bit more yellow and you can keep building up the intensity of color and if I feel like I need something super intense I can go right in there on the wet paper or I can dip my pencil in the water and I can go in and put extra deep color. Just be careful especially if you're working with a darker color because it can um, dent the paper and then you'll never be able to lift it up. I like knowing that I can go back in and take some color out if I need to but if I do want to just kind of get a little bit more pigment I can put it directly on that wet paper and it will it'll grab some extra pigment. Now sometimes when an area is dry like this, I want to go in because maybe I've lost a little bit of definition and then I'll just go in and kind of redefine, maybe add some details. You can even sharpen your pencil before you do this. I would be careful though, make sure it's not wet when you sharpen it because you could break the lead because your, your, um, your pencils are a little bit more uh, vulnerable when they're wet. Just like, you know, a wax pencil would be more vulnerable if it was warm. And I am going to now take this darker, our darker of the pinks that we've been using and kind of trace the outline of the petal and bring it to the center of the flower just so we can see that these are all like singular petals that keep these colors, that carry these colors through them. If you want to put a background in this, you're more than welcome to. It's completely up to you. I think I like it plain like this, but maybe I'll put a few spatters in because I love the spatters. It's not for everyone. If you don't like spatters, don't do it. Okay? Don't feel like you have to. I like to do it, and my favorite way to do this with a watercolor pencil is just to get, have my brush. I didn't wipe my brush off. It's straight out of the pot, and then I just flick it down like that. You don't have to do this, as I mentioned. I just really like it, and sometimes if I have some I'll intensify anything else that I want to in there because you know I hate to waste a brush load of paint <laughs> it's a little crazy I know and I'll just do the same thing with a couple other colors and this is on a watercolor card so typically what I do for watercolor cards is I just put my initials on them and I put them in a in a um, in a plastic baggie uh, one of those little clear ones from Paper Mart and I put them right in my uh, shop for sale 
and this flip, fun and playful and a card like this could go for any occasion from happy birthday to thinking of you uh, to just because I and I I just love little cards like that they're so versatile and uh, great craft fair sellers too if you if you like to sell at craft fairs you have my permission to recreate this card to sell at a craft fair and there you have it thank you so much for watching today please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber if you have any friends that would like to learn how to paint make sure you send them my way share it on Pinterest Facebook or Twitter I do appreciate it so very much thank you so much for watching until next time happy crafting